This, by the way, is our solution to avoid the poly wire to spring out of the insulator. That keeps it inside. And we keep this long just to add another element that improves the visibility. This here is another summer problem. This might not be the pleasant, uh, the most pleasant view, but as you can see, this is an open wound. And it is open because the very same flies created it. And tomorrow, when we have them again in the sorting um, facility that we are building, the vet comes for the second part of the tuberculosis control, we will kill all that and do something about it so that she is not being eaten alive. And I hope this is not too disturbing, but it's the reality that here in this area people are usually have to deal with. Welcome back to Gran Jacamito in Andalusia, Spain, and to our rainless and hot summer. And all this material in here will later be the foundation for our garden when we get around at some point to build a house here. So we built the garden first and receives the spot for the house. It will be a while, so it's not something that we are going to start next year. So the garden will evolve also. The idea is to build soil here ahead of time, um, plant some green manure when autumn comes around and do these kind of things just to improve this and also set a few additional trees and over time this will then emerge in the food forest style and at some point we will then build a house which is going to be somewhere there in that corner but the details have to be worked out i need to learn to properly operate sketchup i know a little bit but um, it's not enough it's an art in itself interesting thing great tool and here under this tree I can see some green leaves. So while everything has dried out, here there's some protection and some condensation is happening and therefore this area continues to have a little bit of green. So that here is the water source. And because of the 20 degrees different in centigrade between night and day, this gets some moisture every morning. The idea of an open forest is great, given that it rains in summer. And it used to, as older people can tell. But now it does not. And so this openness is a huge problem. Because in the past that was great. Oak trees for the pigs and pasture for the cows and other ruminants. But now this openness that you see there, that's a liability now. So we definitely need to figure out how to plant some additional 20,000 trees. And you cannot simply buy them and then get a bunch of people to plant them. That does not work that easily. You can buy a few hundred or maybe two thousand if you tell a lot of people in advance and buy everything that's available. But other than that, you need to have your own nursery, which is why forestry agencies, or how it's called, so from the government, they have huge nurseries so that they have enough trees for reforestation. And we don't have access to that. So we need to create our own nursery, which we are about to do. So the water line is there and the Palovnias are also there in the corner. So it has started. More to follow. So we do have some visible moisture in the air. And it will stay cloudy overnight, according to the forecast. And there are a few more days in the forecast where it also says cloudy, but 
despite the fact that there is water up there, this will not come down. This is simply not heavy enough. But I would assume that is the moisture that evaporated somewhere around here because of the heat. Now it's there and it will float away and not come back. Those 14 guys have received a new water tank. I want to check it out quickly before it gets too dark. Our mob grazing experiment here to free the vetiver apparently was successful because we do have vetiver growing here. It needs a little bit of additional moisture but this area wants to become green now as you can see there where we planted the rows of vetiver. We did plant vetiver here because we have a water pipe nearby because of the pit coral there, the training area. And therefore we can keep it here. This is not the perfect place for vetiver except you are able to give it some additional water during summer. They are curious and they assume I bring food. But they had their ration, and they are fine. And they should also not eat too much, because then they will go fat and will not develop a good bone, a good skeleton, a good skeleton. And that's then a problem later on when they start to eat acorns. And keep in mind that there's an experiment coming up for these guys, but it will be a multi-year experiment and I need to explain this when the time comes but maybe I can disclose one thing so those are 14 and they are about 50 kilo something and unfortunately in the usual way which is not what we are going to do these guys We'll go to the slaughterhouse when they reach approximately an age of 15 months. That means they would usually eat acorns from these trees here. And then when they have been fattened with those acorns by the end of February, March, around that time frame, they would then go to the slaughterhouse. The um, noble pieces as they call it around here so the meat the pork meat will then be offered as fresh meat and all the legs will be turned into ham the foreleg and the hind legs and then the hamon iberico the bellota when they have eaten enough of these um, will then cure for three to five years and then be offered to market that is not what we intend to do. So I think this is a bit cruel and makes no sense except from an economic perspective. So I'm not criticizing anyone, but um, I think maybe we can do this in a different way. So what we are going to do is, and I'm basically now telling you what this uh, idea is, we are going to take three of them when we are allowed to slaughter here on site for our own consumption. We cannot sell that. So we have a butcher and like we did one time, we will take three of them out and butcher them ourselves here on site. And then we ourselves have food and also the ham will be in the, yeah, in, in the curing house for the process. And it's also for our own consumption. I don't know what I'm going to do with that much ham, but that's how it goes. Because we cannot sell it officially. And we should not do any dealings under the table. It gets us in trouble. We don't want it. So, and then everybody else will continue to be here. So they're going to live. And what we do is, we take them to all the different places so that they can uproot the soil and help us seeding in all the different areas. And then a year later, we take another group of three 
and we will then try to see how it tastes. So we then have definitely pork on the table that is way older than usually. And we are trying to collaborate with some chefs here in the area who have restaurants and therefore should know how to really cook this. And we try to cook it sous vide so that it really comes out very well. And we also want to dry age for four weeks some of that meat. There are some reports from people who have done this. You can dry age pork, not only the meat from bovines or the beef, but you can also do this with pork. So we will try this. And then a year later, we will repeat this and we will repeat this until we don't have any. And all the while, we work out with the authorities to get more pigs to try our system that we are developing with all these paddocks in such a way that we can use the pigs to create their own food. So we want to seed a lot of things, especially in the wet part of the year, so that here we have probably a lot of um, things in the ground, like for example daikon radish, so that this improves and also creates food for the pigs. The objective, the overall objective is that we don't have to import anything. So that is what I, I'm aiming for. I want to make this place independent from outside sources. And at the same time, I try to not kill the animals for food too soon. Why would I? They can provide a lot of benefit here on site. But of course, that also creates the challenge that we're dealing with a lot more animals than people usually have. So you can be nice and do it later. And then you have to deal with that. We need to figure that out. That's going to be a challenge. But on the other hand, I know that, for example, in other parts of Spain, in the northern parts, the vaca vieja y gorda, as they say, so the old and fat cow, definitely is a delicacy and it is sold for very high prices so it makes a lot of sense and that means they slaughter a cow between eight and ten years and even in latin america this is known and they do that for the very same reason of course in the case of a cow that can eat a lot of grass that grows all on its own when there is enough moisture that's really not a cost factor. So once we have it green, we can also do that. So doing regenerative definitely pays off in the long run. It's simply insane to rely on feed that has been grown elsewhere. So as here, we had a few leakages and now we have also that wallow there. Here we have a lot of Bermuda grass and even in that low light it is definitely clearly visible. So this all over the place would be just great but at some point we might get this. So this is an image of the future so to say. And here that is the thing that I wanted to show you before it gets too dark. We have an IBC tank. We painted them a while ago. And this is now connected to the pig waterer and I believe it is also connected, yes, um, to this here. So there is the hose and it's gravity fed and uh, the valves in there, they are for gravity systems. And so this is a thousand liters when it's full and then this becomes a little bit independent from this uh, other pipe, which is now high pressure and would basically yeah, create a problem here if we were using it for the waterers. The hoses would simply burst or be disconnected due to the pressure. So this is the solution to that. But it's also a temporary solution, especially this thing here. So this waterer is not very good because it either um, is clogged like it is right now and therefore we need to replace this 
or something else gets destroyed, like the host there gets disconnected. So this is usually for piglets and not for these guys. They are already too big. Um, we are a little bit behind with the things that we wanted to do. And what we are going to do is we use some nipple waterers. We have almost all the material, but we have never gotten around to solder a stand for it. And that is the next thing now. And then we put this here so that the nipple and they cannot destroy their water or dirty it. That should then work a lot better. And as you can see, there is some straw in there and there is no odor. It does not smell. So at the moment, this is fine. So their manure does not create a problem. And as you can see, they have declared this corner there their toilet. Pigs are very clean animals. So that is their toilet. And there we need to add some more straw. So to keep the toilet clean, basically. And this is how it goes. Of course, there are some things that we need to improve. As always, you plan and plan and then chaos breaks out. Uh, breaks out. That is what happened here. But it's not too bad. So this is the training area so that they understand what the wire means. And once that is clear and they are a little bit bigger, and that will be then in autumn, around October, when it's also moist in the ground because there's rain, then we will take them out and take them to a different job site where they can then do some good with their noses. Because that is what pigs can do. They can uproot the soil and help us plant, which we will do once they are strong enough. Right now they do this also, but um, there is more impact when they are a little bit heavier. And I think the way how we keep them here is pretty nice. And they can do what their instincts tell them to do. I just threw in this piece of wood. Good morning. This is a very positive sign. The young ones are eating Bermuda grass. That does them good. Of course, it's not plant grazing in that case, but it doesn't matter. The material is there and they can take advantage of it while the adults are staying inside the lane and eat what we make them available. Eh, mi serro gilipollas.
Allez, wow. Oh. Today is the second part of the tuberculosis check. We do expect some issues as we had some visits by deer and other wildlife, which is the vector here in Andalusia. This is cow 5536. She is blind on one eye and we are trying to save the other eye. She had been running against fence posts and all kinds of other things because she could not see anything. This is the bull 5548 and it turns out that he is tuberculosis positive and now he gets injected an identification inside the rumen so that he can positively be identified without relying on the earmarks. As you could see he was able to spit it out again. Now the red does the second attempt. Unfortunately, we also do have a cow that is tuberculosis positive. So the idea gets also put into her rumen and they both need to go off to the slaughterhouse. In some parts of Europe, tuberculosis is no longer an issue within the bovine population. But in Spain, it is a huge problem. And so the government program to eradicate tuberculosis basically means to cull every animal that tests positive. But the problem is the tuberculosis sits within the wildlife population as well. And extensive ranching means that all these animals are constantly at risk to come in contact with the bacteria that causes tuberculosis. We also did try a version of fence weaning, but it really doesn't work. The mothers are calling their kids and the kids try to go to the mother. And we have seen some really heartbreaking scenes of cows calling their calves. As our project is not about meat production or anything like it, I did some research and apparently cows do wean their calves or the calf stops drinking milk at some point. But of course we need to um, provide enough food to the, cow, to the cows so that they can actually produce that much milk. So they do wean themselves apparently and I am willing to see this through and hopefully it works. Because it's not really necessary that we remove the calves from the cows for sale. That is not our model, that is not what we do. As I was able to read, the natural weaning happens around 10 months of age. And that is perfectly fine to us. And we don't need a new calf every year so that we have a product to sell. What we want is a herd so that we can regenerate the soil and get the herd effect. That was it for today. Thank you for watching and following along. See you in a couple of days when I bring out a new video.